Hi, hi, hello. Let me just make sure I have, oh, my laptop's gonna fall off. Eek. Right, can you hear me and see me okay? So if you're watching me live, give me a hashtag live in the um, comments below. If you're catching up on replay, if you can pop me a hashtag replay. And before I go with you today, I am actually quite upset today, especially in the last hour. So without going into details, there are some people, I don't know if they're on this page or not, but feel it's acceptable to talk to people the way that they've been talking to me today. And I am really quite hacked off because there is absolutely no need to not be respectful, to not be pleasant and to not be kind and it really upsets me. Anyway, today's training is all about getting your shit together for summer and this was, I was inspired to do this by an Instagram post that somebody I know put on which I have put in the document so you can access the document through the link that's in the description of the video so basically it just says this warm weather need to slow the down I'm still back and um it is a, a thought process that I've heard a couple of girls talking about that you know they're they're, they're, they're feeling a little bit upset that they hadn't maximised their time in lockdown mm. because it was another summer that was coming around where they hadn't done what they said that they were going to do at the start of the year so that they could avoid the crash dieting and what not. So I am going to take you through the considerations that need to be looked at, take you through some actions that need to happen in order to get your shit together for summer now this is not all this is not about getting a bikini body because you have a body put on a bikini that is a bikini body this is about you know if you do want to lose weight then this will help you if you don't you know that is also cool so let me just before i kick off let me just double check that i am indeed where i'm supposed to be do, 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 do. Yes, I am here. I am here. Oh, there's lots here. Hi, ladies. Hi, ladies. Um, the second, before I go on, the second part is if you are watching this, I would love for you to share this with your friends. We want to be able to help as many people as possible. That doesn't necessarily having them come in and be success stories. You know, this is about how can we share the love and spread all this free content that I deliver every single week and. I am in other groups and I know that what I'm delivering to you guys for free is better value than what some people are paying for. So share the love, get more people involved. You know, this is all about having an environment where people can come and feel welcome and actually learn some things as well. Okay, so share the love. Da -da -da -da. Right, shit together for summer. Okay, so it is literally three months until June. April, May, end of June, right? So typically our summers, depending where you are, will start in June and it is entirely possible to drop two, sto two stone, two stone by then, two dress sizes. You know, it's actually possible to drop more than two stone. We've had clients come in and drop over 30 pounds in as little as 90 days. So we know it's possible. We have the evidence, we have the facts. So not everybody wants to drop two dress sizes, not everybody wants to drop two stones. So if you've got less than that that you want to lose, absolutely more than achievable. And it's more than achievable to do it permanently as well, rather than waiting until middle of May and going, oh crap, I really I need to do something. So if you are prepared to take action, now if you're not prepared to take action, then you must be prepared to accept the here and now. That is the difference. So, you know, we'd all love to have a magic wand because we would nobody would be here. Nobody would be caring about what they look like because we'd a magic wand did our perfect body. We don't have magic wands, so we have to take action. Now, taking action does not mean slimming teas, boom bod, I think that's what it's called, cutting out carbs. You know, if you want to avoid having to do this every single year, 
you know, it needs to, you need to look at doing something differently than a traditional quick fix. So if a style of eating is not something that you can imagine doing six months, a year, three years from now, then it's not going to help achieve permanent results. Now, I know, I have said it myself in the past, and I hear it happening quite a lot. You know, oh, I just need to lose the weight and then I'll be able to maintain it. So by doing something quick fixy, you know, like a shake diet, like a starvation, like a very low calorie diet, like fasting, by doing it to get to a certain point and thinking that then you can maintain without having to maintain the style of eating, then it's not going to work that way because nothing has changed other than some very basic tactics. All right, so some considerations. So get yourself a pen and bit of paper. And while I'm going through these, start taking notes about what is what is applicable to you. All right, so first and foremost, you need to have a very clear goal in mind. Now, the goal does not need to be the number in the scales. It does not need to be a dress size. A goal could be that you want to have consistency in your habits in three months from now, because by having the consistency and having the right behaviours, the weight will come off. You know, the weight will come off. If you want to put a number, like a two stone number, that is cool, but you need to give yourself a little bit of a buffer because I want to lose two stone, that's 28 pounds. I want to lose two stone by the end of June, happy days. But if you hit 24 pounds, does that mean you failed? So give yourself a threshold as to what is acceptable because your weight can change for many, many different reasons with like quite a lot of buffer. So, you know, give yourself a little bit of leeway there. If it's two dress sizes, you know, is there a specific item of clothing that you have there that you can wear? Um, you want to dig out a pair of jeans in the wardrobe or something, whatever. So you've got your goals in mind. Have a very clear reason why this is important to you. And I've done quite a lot of why training in this group before. And I know the ladies that are watching who are part of our members area, um, they do a big exercise on their why as well. So why is it so important to you? Is it, it needs to be something that is so important that it'll make you say no to things or it'll make you get out of bed to do your exercise or it'll make you... Um, turn off the telly and read a book you know something that's that really grabs you in the gut think about all the things in the past that you might have tried that you maybe would have given up on think about any any common triggers so you know for me I know that on a, a Friday or a Saturday evening depending on my working hours you know I know that I want to sit down with a glass of wine and I know that that will then result in snacks so that there's some things that are important for me to do. So sitting down with a glass of wine with my husband at a weekend is actually quite important for me to do that. So I need to know, you know, my own boundaries. And am I going to reach my goals if I drink a bottle and a half of wine? No, I am not. So what do I need to moderate? What do I need to be aware of that are triggers that I know where I can fall down on? And the same goes for you. If you've done slimming world or, or weight watchers and you know that, that you've got areas where you go oh well just put it in the fuck it bucket then be very clear on what they are we're not aiming for perfection i've actually said this twice in two different ways we are not aiming to be perfect so get that out of your mind uh, stop trying to think of i've been good and i've been bad you know what you eat how you eat does not determine your worth it's does not determine your worth in any way whatsoever so if we can start thinking away from being good and being bad there is no thing no it's the same as food there is no good foods and there is no bad foods we want to think of everything of being on a sliding scale optimum less optimal you know and somewhere in that scale is okay you know don't beat yourself up if you have a donut don't beat yourself up if you have half a bucket of celebrations you know it's and because that's where typically a lot of us will just go blown it might as well have x y and z okay um understand your motivators so what motivates you is it other people recognizing that you're doing well is it um looking at yourself and and seeing that you look good is it putting on clothes and they're feeling baggy is it your performance 
exercising? Is it um, your energy levels? Is it the quality of your sleep? Understand what makes you feel good. You know, so for me, it could be my when my skin is looking good and glowing. Like I know that I'm feeling healthy and I'm looking healthy and doesn't always need to be you look skinny or you feel skinny. You know, there's other things as well that can help drive you forward. Um, and Clara talked about it in our live yesterday about non-scale victories. And I know it's quite a common term in um, the losing weight realm, but it is so important that we are progressing in other areas other than just what the number on the scale says. Um, on the flip side, understand your blockers. Um, the time one is huge also I'm just too busy oh I'm just too busy I'm not in the right headspace you know nobody is in the right headspace all of the time it's not a thing I'm just I just need some motivation that comes from within someone else can motivate you give you a motivational talk but it comes from the with, within and that's why it's so important to go back to goals and go back to whys because when you have it internally you'll have much more chance of getting there um, focus on your controllables. So you can you control this. You control what goes in your mouth. You control how you exercise. You control the intensity. All of those things are in your control. What is not in your control is things like the weather. Um, what is not in control is who does if somebody else is doing the shopping. You know all these things. So you can there's there's going to be there might be elements of blaming somebody else for having food in or blaming someone else for for us for a takeaway but you can control your controllables so you're like right okay where's a happy medium doesn't have to be oh well i can't control any, any of that but most of all controlling the brain controlling how you think about things and it is so important to always focus on the positives if you start focusing on the small wins the small positives then your brain will start going towards that way and when you're feeling more positive you take more action it's fact 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 um progress not perfection don't try and change everything at once change one to three things at a time you know that'll help understand you and how you react to things because typically us girls are especially the the ladies in our environment they are so used to succeeding in in their work or with their families or um, they're, they're so used to being able to achieve things and then when they can't achieve something typically being in control of, of their health and, and weight loss that can be a real morale killer it can be a real you know why can't I do this I'm such a failure when in actual fact it's just trying to do too much at once um, one to three things at a time is pretty, quite good accountability you know if you if being motivated as a challenge or if being in the right, right mindset as a challenge, then you need to seek help. You need to get some form of accountability because if you've had, tried in the past and failed, then what is different this time? You know, holding yourself accountable is great, but if you know that you just go, oh, well, you know, one bottle of wine won't hurt and I'll just get back on it tomorrow and then tomorrow when you're feeling a bit ropey, um, and all the carbs come out, you know, oh, well, I'll just give it another go tomorrow. Oh, well, that's two days now. Might as well start on Monday. Um, so that hasn't worked for you in the past. What is different this time? So accountability is a huge factor because when you are, somebody else is relying on you to do things, you will do them, you know. And if you think how many, um, you know, think t with, within your friendship group or, if somebody always tells you that they're going to do something or or be somewhere and they never do it or they never turn up, you know, like, actually, there's a bit of an issue there. How does that make you feel? And if you're doing that to yourself, how is that making you feel? Um, internal motivation I've talked about. So motivation comes from you and your goals and your why. And, you know, it's all very well and good saying, oh, I just need I just need some more motivation. Yes, Absolutely. Having accountability can give you that. So if that's what you need, then seek help. And if you have if you struggle with being motivated and internal motivation, then seek help. You know, it's important. If you want to get somewhere and you want to do it quickly and you want to do it safely and you want to never have to do it again, 
and you've not been able to do it yet, then there is no harm in asking for help. You know, I am a huge proponent on it. If you want something, you need to take action. And if you need help to get there, then go for your guns. You know, absolutely. And there's there's this kind of suspicion out there and there's a few of you in this group maybe even watching this that are suspicious of you know getting coaching or suspicious of spending money on yourself and I, I ask the question why do you have that thinking why do you have that suspicion it's it is normal you know if you want something in this day and age you go after it and you go get it you know and I think I said and I post this week you know we tell our kids that they can do anything that they want. They can be anyone that they want if they go after it. But then we're not doing it ourselves. And it, 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 it does baffle me and it actually does question, you know, how important is it? If it is, like, on top of your priority and it's been years that, that you felt happy, then, you know, go for your gun, seek help. There is, and probably... I'm just thinking to some of our members and our most success, our biggest success, success stories, we ask them, you know, what scared you about this in the beginning? What was it that, why did you not nearly sign up? And it's like, oh, I was scared of investing in myself. And then it's like, well, it's the best thing that I've ever done. So the proof is in the pudding. You know, you want something, you go after it. Um, perfection, as I said, it's not real. Nobody's perfect. Nobody has a perfect lifestyle. Nobody has... Um, has it all sussed out not a single person in the world but we can all progress we can all progress in little areas so that is the mindset bucket so i hope you've been taking notes I hope you've been thinking about some of these things about for you um let's move into the nutrition element so nutrition when it comes to the science of fat loss Nutrition is 80% of the equation, 80%. So this is why we get a lot of women really confused as to why they're doing all this exercise, but their weight is not shifting. And that's because it's the, the nutrition isn't right. So key components here, hydration. Hydration, hydration, drink your water. You want to be aiming about two and a half litres a day, you know, depending on your size and how hot it is and whatnot, but... Two to three litres a day should suffice. And when you start hydrating properly, the benefits are amazing. You know, more energy, better skin, less hunger, easier to exercise. You know, all of these things are actually real. You're not sitting on the sofa at six o'clock uh, in a mad slump. Um, so hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Um, the only downside, of course, is the peeing situation. So for those of you that are watching that are within our client area, you know what I'm talking about here. Um, it does calm down, but it, it does need to be consistent because if you have two days off, then you start drinking all the water again, then the peeing situation starts up again. So hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. And I did an infographic last week i think so if you scroll down you know there's the the winds the benefits of the water situation um getting your nutrients right so macronutrients which is your protein your carbs and your fats what us girls don't tend to have enough protein in our diet so that can be a huge win it can stop us feeling hungry it takes our body it uses more energy in our body to actually uh, digest protein so we're burning more calories for that and we need protein to help build and repair our muscles as we know as we age our muscles um our muscle mass decreases and we, we the more muscle we have the higher our metabolism is so muscles are good we need protein to fuel the muscles build the muscles get your protein in girls um and fruit and veg so five portions of fruit and day fruit five portions of fruit and veg a day um you know Aim, I always have this thing that three portions of veg, two of fruit. You know, we need a range of colours, we need a range of types. Get your fruit and veg in. Um, being in a calorie deficit is the one key thing here. And that can be, you know, last week I took you all through uh, how to calculate your calories and the recording is in the groups, no, it's in the guides area. Um, so what is your what is your calorie goal for fat loss, you know, and a calorie deficit? Um, how accurately are you tracking? 
that is in 99.9% .9 of cases, if somebody is plateaued or not lost weight, it's because the tracking is out, you know. And I think I mentioned about the, the study with the nutritionists um, and their accuracy of tracking and it was like 300 calories a day out. So get that dialed in immediately. And tracking can be a ball ache. I completely get it. But if you are, if your goal is to lose body fat and you've struggled in the past, then this can be a way of getting in control of what you are actually consuming and being really honest with yourself because, you know, eating the kids' leftovers, popping into the fridge and pulling out a wee sneaky um, bit of chocolate you know, a wee sneaky bit of toast, all these things add up when, you know, you could be cooking the healthiest, leanest meals in the world, but it's all these extra little things that, that can then contribute. Um, incorporate what you love. Honestly, incorporate what you love. So start off going, right, okay, when am I going to have a glass of wine? When am I going to have a bit of chocolate? And when am I going to, like, enjoy them so that it is like, a, oh, yes, I'm really liking this. How, if you are a chocoholic, plan in a chocolate every single day, a bar of chocolate every single day. If you love pizza and normally have pizza three times a week, then have pizza three times a week, but lower the quantity so that you don't feel deprived. Because when we start depriving ourselves, that's when the cravings start. And when the cravings start, that's when the binging happens. And when the binging happens, that's when the guilt starts. And when the guilt starts, that's when we start feeling like failures and it goes round and round in circles and circles, okay? So incorporate what you love. Um, if you've ever been on any of my webinars, you know about the chocolate hobnobs. You know, the person that loved chocolate hobnobs and when they would get stressed, they would just rattle through a packet of chocolate hobnobs. And what we actually did was say, right, every single day, you're going to have two chocolate hobnobs. But I don't want chocolate. You're going to have two chocolate hobnobs. You know, you're just going to have them. You're going to have them as part of after your dinner with a, a cup of tea and then after a while you know this, when the stress happens you didn't want a chocolate hobnob because it wasn't a, a sin it wasn't disallowed it was just something that she had so you know be very aware of of your go-to's um so that's your nutrition exercise 20 percent of your results now exercise isn't is probably more important for longevity than it is for fat loss. So obviously burning extra calories for uh, from exercise is going to help with that calorie deficit. It's not going, by itself, it's not going to put you in a calorie deficit for the most part, but it can help give a little bit of a buffer. But, you know, long-term health implications of not exercising, especially for us girls, are really, really bad. You know, muscle ma wasted muscle mass, um, bone density decreases and you know what we're seeing just now women in their 60s 70s are actually seeing you know fractures because they haven't exercised they haven't done load bearing exercise so load bearing on your feet impact we want to put resistance through those muscles so you want to be doing weights or um you know, banded works really putting those muscles to work um and the load bearing part you know even just carrying shopping you know if you're starting from scratch just carrying bags of shopping can be a really good one um three times a week minimum for exercise please um you know start small if you're doing nothing then you know three times a week of walking for half an hour is better than nothing you know as you progress maybe three times a week walking with a backpack full of stones you know there's it doesn't have to be in a gym with barbells and dumbbells. Um, and this is a huge one. Don't wait for gyms to open. You know, exercise is free at home. You have things that you can lift up. You have things that you can move about. Um, but, you know, what I'm seeing just now is quite a high pop percentage of women going, oh, my gym's opening again. I've gained two stone, but my gym's opening, so all is okay. You know, probably just going to the gym isn't going to help you lose that weight by itself. You know, the nutrition needs to be the primary factor. Um, so don't wait to gyms to open again, because what happens if, God help us all, we go into another lockdown and gyms shut? You know, what is the backup plan? What is, you know, what do you do if you're injured and you can't go to the gym? How do you then ensure that you don't gain lots of weight? 
and that's one thing you know women I've seen a lot of girls just now coming through who in their, their mid 40s and um, who have been really active and fit over the years but then they start gaining weight just due to hormonal changes and metabolism slowing down but they don't know what to do to fix it because they've always exercised and that is how they've made control their, their body the way they want it to be and they're not able to do that anymore so look at the nutrition as a primary factor your other considerations as well here are sleep and stress stress management is huge um, lack of sleep as a form of stress these are very hormonal um things so lack of sleep has hormonal changes too much stress has hormonal changes and they have a real part to play in your fat loss um so try and get a handle on them as much as possible so look at what are the triggers again what stresses you out what can you control what um buffers and um what can you put in in to help minimize the stress on you is there people that can deal it you can delegate to is there things that you can just not do how are you managing your time you know how you have you actually done any proper time management and looked at your rocks and your your pebbles and your sand i think that was three trainings ago um the accountability factor as well who is holding you to account for all the things that you said you wanted is it your husband if it is great be mindful though that partners tend to go i love you the way you are which is great and they should because they married you or they're with you because they love you the way you are but is that then giving you permission to go oh well if you love me the way i am then that's okay then i don't need to do anything um when you know when you've got that moment of oh, i can't be bothered going out for exercise i can't be bothered going for a walk i can't be bothered drinking water i want to drink a bottle of wine hubby goes but i love you the way you are You're like, oh that's okay fine happy days or is it your friend holding you accountable um that say oh but you don't need to change you know there's all these things that at, at play when it comes to accountability so be hard on yourself you know are you always looking for an out so think about that as well um lifestyle change so yes we can all do changes in the short term which is great but how do you change your behaviours long term to ensure that this stuff sticks? How do you do that? How do you then go and say, right, this is an area of my life that I am not doing great at. What behaviours, what changes do I have to make to make this stick? To be the person that I want to be so I never have to do this again. Um, external factors, so be ready for them. Barbecues, social life, um, parties, all these things are going to be happening again. We need to, if we want to be healthy and lean long term, then we still need to have these things. So how do we balance all of that with the goals that we have? And that does mean, you know, if you are a bit of a social butterfly and you're always going to be out on a Friday night after work, you know, happy days. But does that then mean that you have to claw back some of that um drinking on a saturday does that mean that the snacks need to calm down on the thursday night you know look what is important what is important to you and if it is important to go out and have fun then go out and have fun but things need to be moderated elsewhere um and manage your environment this is absolutely key um you know go and in, go into your kitchen now, this is a really good exercise go into your kitchen and open your cupboards what do you see first in the fridge and what do you see first in the cupboards if you're seeing crisps and chocolate and cheese and just chocolate spread i'm just thinking of all the things that tend to be what people will go to move them out of your eye lane have them up high or have them down low or have them hidden away in another cupboard what do you see when you open the freezer is that a big tub of ice cream either just don't have been it and don't have it you know identify what are your your foods that you will go to when you're stressed or anxious or tired is it toast you know a lot of us in the uk are very much bread lovers and that's fine we're not talking about cutting out carbs but if you know that you can capitally scarf four slices of toast and butter of an evening rather than having dinner then try having another carb available don't always go to bread and butter you know we're trying to break we're going to trying to create new regimes, new behaviours, new rituals. Mm -hmm. So it does involve doing things differently. Alrighty. So 
I hope that has helped. Can you give me a little um, help? Help in the comments if that has helped you tonight. Um, we've only got, we've had nine ladies watching and only four are hashtag live. So who is not being accountable? Do, 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 do. Who is it? So what I would, so just to recap, share the love, get some ladies involved, be kind, don't be like the people that I have been with today. Third of all, let's get some action taken going using the document. And I can't remember what that was that third, second of all. And 16th of all, if you need help, if you want help, then think about all the things that you've tried how long has it taken you to get to a place where, you know, enough's enough? What is your what is your cutoff point? How many more years do you want to accept the here and now? And if you've tried every year to lose a couple of stone and nothing's happened, then seek help. That doesn't need to be from me. It can be from anyone, anywhere. I'm not precious, but I want to challenge some thought processes, you know, it is, people have coaches all the time, there's a huge chunk of girls that we have in our group, 40 odd ladies, who have sought help, I have coaches, Clara has a coach, you know, we all have the ability to be better, to be, to live the life that we want, to not have to just accept what we think is right, if that makes sense, so yeah, I'm over and out. Have a, a gorgeous evening. The sun is shining here. I'm wearing a black polo neck jumper, yet the sun is shining. Um, so yes, been lovely to have you all here. And I hope you can take some action from today. Because after all, if we don't take action, we just get passed over. All right. I'll, peace out. Have a corker of a day. And I will speak to you very soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>